quite aptly with um, the planning for project design um, section and we'll probably work our way through um, the whole lot and work out what needs to what needs to add, be added. Um, but Ariel, what... oh, my apologies for cutting you off there for a second. Just want to flag that we have started a recording. Um, if anyone does not want to be in video, please turn your video off now. Thanks so much for catching that. Um, we'll be recording this session for posterity. Okay, back to you, Ariel. Um, I've just and I have just spotted a um a typo that we'll need to go back and fix. Um, but uh, yeah, we started with this getting started checklist. So people are interested in figuring out how to plan their um their projects. Um, we have popped in um, a new checklist that uh, covers aims and values, timelines and milestones, methodology, operations, stakeholders, outputs, community communications, maintenance and archiving. We have um, links out to useful documents or other places in the Turing Way where you can find out more about the different documents that um, might support this aspect of your planning. Um, and we've also had a little note down here um, to sort of highlight the, the getting ethical and legal approval, which was a previous heading, even if you don't need a institutional ethical approval, your project will still benefit from planning using self-reflection techniques. Um, so yeah, so this is a, a starting point for people. We might eventually break this out into its own separate um, subchapter, um, but for now, we're just pleased to have it in there and linking out to useful stuff for people who are looking to do um, planning. Um, Batul and Ale also went and spoke to um, Jem about doing a um, an illustration, and I'm I haven't seen it yet, so I'm really excited to see it when Jem uh, comes on to share uh, their work with us. Um, the next stages, uh, Batul has opened up a PR for the project cycles. So, um, and I know that there's also quite a lot. Of, you've also done a lot of work on. Um, writing up stuff around change management and all sorts of things as well. Um, so looking forward to getting those in uh, the book as well. Um, I think that's it for me. I also did a lot of um, PR uh, reviewing as well. It was a lot of fun to, to work through such a lot of contributions from everybody and give feedback on them. So I'm really pleased to see that a lot of them have been have emerged as well. So thank you. I'll stop there. Hey, fantastic, great work. Lots of clapping emojis um, in what do you call it, our little squares. I don't know how you describe emoji reactions. Great job, great job, team. Um, really exciting to see that kind of work, especially because the project management team within the Turing has really been an incubator too for um, many practices that can be expanded outwards um, to different organizations and contexts. Um, so next up, I'm going to pass the mic to Sandy and to Saranjit. I don't know which of the two of you um, would like to speak. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll go ahead. Yeah, uh, yes. good day, everyone. My name is Gilgin Sandy. And, um, I'm part of the localization team in the Tony Way community. And this is my first time of attending the book touch. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for the things that I've learned. And also for Battle, uh, that's you know, been able to walk me around some of the major things to learn and how to contribute. So um, so I'll just share my screen on some of the things I've done during the period. I uh, hope that's fine to share screen. Okay. Uh, so during the uh, book dash, I worked with uh, Sanjud on hybrid collaboration. So hybrid collaboration is uh, basically uh, talking about how you could manage an hybrid event or collaboration or a workspace, right? So it's uh, it, it's coming from how uh, the paradigm shift in the way people work, you know, after the COVID. And people are actually having to handle, you know, between going to work and staying at home to work. So we have this chapter, you know, to talk about it, how uh, it's important that people should be able to handle such 
activities, hybrid and also online. And uh, I worked with Sanjud on it. And uh, I think I, I joined her in adding content for, uh, she did a lot of work and I joined her in adding content, content regarding challenges. Some of the challenges you would face when you are trying to handle hybrid activities or you are collaborating like events like this. Yeah, okay, so events like conferences some people are online, some people are physical, right? So uh, some of the challenges you might encounter, right? Uh, uh, so some of the challenges we actually, I came up with was uh, social networking sometimes because of hybrid settings like this, you might not really have, you might not really get involved in local networking as much as possible as compared to if it was physical. So we talked about that and communication in an hybrid environment. So, and also lack of space and focus. Like uh, sometimes when you're at home, you easily get distracted compared to if we're at work, that you could easily be attentive when you are there, you know your environment. So we talked about all these things and um, how you could actually handle some of this. Uh, some of the solutions, the potential solutions for issues like this indicate that sometimes because of how we are working now, you have to ensure people, um, organizers to have to ensure that uh, they try as much as possible to engage people, try as much as possible to ensure that people are not lacking out and missing out on local networking and you know, just setting up uh, traditional methods as much as possible to ensure that people are fully involved in working whether it's in every setting or whether it's in every setting or a uh, physical setting whichever way so I'm, I'm really excited i got to work on this uh, chapter i learned a lot about it and yeah from the research i really learned a lot about it and uh, i think the last chapter on it was on uh... okay so we also talked about guidelines sorry i missed that uh, we worked on guidelines for every collaboration i think i've I've mentioned this on how to be able to organize such events here and being inclusive in your location too, to ensure that all these things are all handled and ways for you to reduce distractions and communication tools. I, uh, okay, communication tools that you could use to be able to improve every collaboration in such settings. And I, the last one, uh, was the resources, other resources that you could, you know, read more about how to be able to handle uh, hybrid activities and collaboration. Um, yeah, I worked with Sanjit on this and I'm really excited for the things that I learned uh, from, you know, working with her on this chapter. So I also did, uh, I, 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 I found this uh, chapter on the, on the, one of the issues on the Tony Way book. And I also decided to contribute to it. I, I, it's a documentation on, uh, uh, yeah, a chapter on documentation. So basically uh, it talks about the chapter is trying, it's it's a work in progress. So I think uh, I, I, someone had it on the last book dash November. It's still a work in progress. So I decided to add some, my thoughts to it. So I, I talked about, uh, I think there's a part that, uh, that that was left. Uh, I think it was on. Yeah, let me open that. On documentation regarding documentation tools and formatting languages. So I added some content to it, and some ideas around. Let me open that. Sorry, me. Okay, yeah. So, uh, about formatting languages and platforms, languages like Markdown and GitHub platforms you could use for your documentation with me and Jupyter books. So I added my thoughts to it, and I really, uh, I think this this is still pending and it's yet for review. So that's for anyone that would like to come in and you know contribute or chip in on the other thing. So yeah, that's 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 all for me. Uh, oh. I think that's all for me. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much. Um, I was about to ask you what your ask was, but I think the ask is, folks, please review um, pull request, uh, give your input. Thank yeah. you so, so much. Yeah, um, actually, actually, the, uh, the big collaboration, I, we have 
uh, I worked on a couple of conflicts. It's okay now, just pending review and merging. So please feel free to re review and go ahead and merge if you think it's okay to go ahead. Thank you. Fantastic. Woohoo. Just a flag for you all. There's a collaboration cafe coming up in the coming weeks if you want to join in or even do some live merging there as well. Right. Um, Thank you. Sounds great. All right, cool. Um, passing the mic to Liz. Uh, Liz, I think you're muted. So um, I have been working with lots of people here. Um, we are going to create a new guide to accessibility, um, although we've also talked about just using the word access. Um, and uh, we started out with a document. Um, I want to shout out to Andrea Sanchez Tapia, even though she's not here, uh, because she gives us a wonderful framework for looking at what accessibility is and why we do it. Um, and uh, we had kind of last book dash started with a document that had some introductory material and uh, an outline of what things we would cover. Um, there's been some great discussion on GitHub uh, this week about uh, kind of a broader sense uh, in which we can talk about uh, accessibility policy for both uh, the Turing Way book and the events and kind of the whole um, environment or community. Um, and uh, Anne has, has helped a lot with um, turning turning our writings into a uh, beginning of a landing page for the guide. And I have started to work on a chapter about alt text. And um, Laurel is going to work on a chapter about accessibility for people who have low vision, which is the term that at least is preferred in the US and we'll have to see uh, what other English speaking people think. Um, the term for people who who have some usable functional vision, um, but need, for example, to be able to enlarge uh, things or have uh, difficulty distinguishing colors or, um, you know, have other aspects that we can consider about making images accessible. Um, so, um, seems like we've made a lot of progress in organizing. Um, and I also wanted to work on something unrelated and, and, you know, wasn't able to get to it this week, but I hope to not be one dimensional and only work on accessibility things. Um, I'm involved with the Many Dogs Project, which is a big team consortium of people doing research on uh, dog cognition. And um, although this wasn't uh, wasn't my um, my my main role in that organization is in data management and open science, but because it's new and there are a few of us still. We're looking at uh, how to select next projects for the whole consortium to work on together. And, uh, you know, I have an interest in, in figuring out how we do that uh, inclusively and equitably um, and openly. Um, so that's something that I hope to work on and, and hope to find collaborations for, uh, you know, how we, project selection in big team science. Uh, so if anybody's interested in that topic, I'd love for them to get in touch. And I think that's it for me. If anybody has any questions. Lots of heart emoji reactions from folks and claps as well. Um, 
really such important, important work um, you're doing, Liz. And I think really from us, it's so integral to work with people with lived experiences, but to work alongside folks as well. And we've seen the way in which, like even in these discussions around, you know, building a guide for accessibility, thinking about an accessibility policy for the community, like how do we connect all of these different perspectives and ways of thinking alongside like really prioritizing the lived experiences of people. Um, yeah, it's a really ongoing process. And really thank you for, for being involved with us um, and for your leadership. And yes, the link to big team science, oh man. We're talking about big culture change in how science and research is done. Accessibility is so, so important in that direction. Big team science is new, so let's make sure we build accessibility into it. Totally. Seeing a lot of nods on our on our videos as well. Absolutely. Um, all right. So we did have a live merge that happened in the chat. Um, congratulations, Do you, is Sandy Batool. Hat. I don't. I wish that I I've been able to move back in time so that we could get that live screen share but congrats to you all it's not it's not merged sorry this is Ariel it's not merged yet so um if Sarandi or Sandy would like to share their screen you should be able to click the green squash and merge button you can merge it live Do you wanna... okay I could, I could share my screen said, um the, the protocol we have is that if you open the pull request, then you get to be the one that merges it in once it's approved. So you're, you, nobody's the tools approved it, nobody's merged it yet, so you can merge it. If you'd like to share your screen, which makes it both more fun and perhaps more terrifying <laughs> to do in real time. Okay, so I share my screen. Uh, Sandy, I don't think we can hear you. Okay. Yes, we can hear you now. All right, so we're seeing your screen and I am going to put the link uh, to the pull request in the chat here. Um, the chapter for hybrid collaboration that now has all the changes approved. Go ahead. To Mitch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We are all good <laughs> okay. to merge. But if, and I'll make sure to screenshot um, and we'll oh. put this into the chat on Slack. My network is really bad for me. <laughs> Can you hear me clearly? I think it was from me. Yes, we, we can. can hear you. All right. So I'll, I'll just go ahead to Mitch. All right. All right. So should we do a, count, a countdown? A three, two, one. All right, Sandy, count us down. Okay. Uh, from from five. Right. Yeah. Five. Just the most four, dramatic merge. Three. Two, one, zero! <laughs> it, wait, <Woo> okay. <laughs> okay. Confirm me. Oh, come on. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that was a very dramatic <laughs> countdown into having another couple of checks to go through. Um, there is a, yeah, there was some. And, <laughs> and the merge attempt has been failed. Um, what happened? What happened? What happened? But I think it, it has. It, it merged, but yeah, merge. So it looks like there was a. It was the branch was able to be merged, but it showed us a a scary merge fail uh, warning there for a second. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for the honor. Appreciate that. Congratulations. Thank you. Sandra, thank you. 
Woohoo! Lots of hearts and celebrations and the reactions. Super exciting. Um, Woohoo! All right. Um, so I'm actually going to take us a step back um, and maybe draw upon some of the, the points that Liz was making and the efforts that have been started in the direction of accessibility. Um, we primarily have been discussing the difference, I think, between what is put within a guide and what is our practice as a community, because we realize quite quickly that there is very much a difference, um, meaning that accessibility, as it's talked about in many spaces, perhaps even outside of the Turing Way, is different, right? Accessibility is sometimes talked about with respect to, to disability, meaning the deficit model um, should can talk more about maybe in another context, meaning it's kind of viewed as something that uh, is a part of one's practices, but separate from um, maybe how you would be planning or operating more broadly, uh, meaning how accessible are you to, to kind of a wider audience, wider community, to your team. Um, and I'd realized that in order to kind of maybe separate the two, an accessibility policy for how we work together within the Turing Way might have to be something that we develop as a community as opposed to um, perhaps recommendations for best practices in documenting data viz, um, in writing alt text for images and data visualizations and the like. And so I got started um, utilizing the, the definitions and summaries from last book dash that Liz and Andrea had worked upon to really start a bare bones um, bare bones accessibility policy for us. And I'm gonna link that in the chat here, um, but it's very much a work in progress. I, I think what we're realizing is that if we want to start, if we wanna have an accessibility policy that holds us accountable within the Turing way, it really must apply across everything that we do. Meaning it's not just how accessible is the Turing way as a book and as a set of guides, but also how are our community um, channels accessible in a larger sense? Um, how are our um, events accessible? Um, which is hybrid collaboration, Sandy's PR is very much part of that, right? Um, how are accessible are we um, sociolinguistically? Um, and so on and so forth. And so we really kind of began with thinking more concretely about, well, we can't necessarily affect how accessibility is done more broadly, but we can have a very strong set of definitions for how we think about it. Um, so some of the initial drafts are in that issue and pull request. Um, and we also did uh, a kind of review of the guide for uh, upcoming guide for accessibility as well. And maybe just a bonus pull request is that I did pull a um, pull a history of the Turing Way that was written for some onboarding documents as the core kind of organizational team has expanded into a pull request about the history of the Turing Way, which is something that we've been aiming to do for a long, long time. Um, and this is another thing that we'd aim to write uh, collectively. I'll drop the link into the chat here. But it's just a couple of paragraphs that kind of zoom through 2018 all the way up into the present. Um, and in the coming weeks and months is something that we'd like to invite people's stories from different stages of the project to really make it more of a collective history. Okay, I think that's all for me. I should. Cool. Um, I pass it on to Emma. Hello, I can spy Mackenzie there, which she's always cute. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, um, so what I've been doing this week um, is it's a bit of a story. So I'll go through the story, and it started actually with Batul um, asking the research community management team at the Turing for some advice on uh, how to structure her registration form for the conference that she was planning. Uh, or has been plan, planned recently. Um, so we invited her to come to one of our meetings where we had a sort of open discussion and sharing of different things we had done uh, in terms of registration forms. So um, I wanted to, or we as a team, uh, want to share our work in, in the Turing way. So I this week I wanted to put um, what we had gathered in that meeting, um, I wanted to put that into the Turing way. 
So um, we already had a section um, in the Turing Way about organising conferences. So I'll show you kind of what I was my starting point. Uh, I think I'm going to have problems sharing because my computer is hating sharing at the moment. Let me try anyway and see if it works out. Um, is that working? Um, no, my computer's going to crash. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'll see how, how long it lasts. So I started off with this small kind of section. Yeah, it's going to crash. Um, I'm started with this small section and um, ah, I'm going to stop sharing because it's uh, my computer doesn't like it. Uh, if I'd go away, I'll come back again in a minute. Um, so it started off with this small section. Oh, Emma, I think we've lost I'm you. Back. I'm back now. I'm not going to share because... My computer keeps crashing when I share, so obviously I need to contact IT, so I apologise. So I started off with a, just a small section, which was in the organising conference chapter. Um, so what I've done this week is I've, um, and I'll link it in the chat, I made this HackMD document um, where um, I've broken down our discussion that we had in our in our team meeting. Um, into uh, a new subchapter about registration forms. What I actually also did, which I found very joyful, was contacting Batool to find out what her registration form was actually like. So she sent me her template. I also contacted the fantastic Rachel Ainsworth, who is the community manager for uh, the SSI, Sustainable um, Software Sustainability Institute, because they do a really fantastic registration form for the collaboration workshop. And I also uh, spoke to um, some of the other community managers, particularly Vicky, um, to get her uh, input as well. But at the end of this um, uh, HackMD, I've made like, a, I'm calling it a mega registration form template. And it's got loads and loads of questions in that you can basically use. So um, I was thinking about putting the template into just the GitHub um, repository, but I actually then realized in our, uh, community handbook we've got a section that's called templates um, template collection so I think I'm going to just plop it into the template collection so essentially it will be a sub chapter which will be under the organizing uh, conference chapter and then it will be a template as well um, so that's what I've been doing and I've just made it into a pull request but I'm very much aiming to get it done uh, this next week and finish it off because it's really nearly there um, and if anyone wants to help me review it that would be amazing so that is my ask thank you very wonderful. much wonderful <laughs> wonderful i did just see a hand come up from kirstie i don't know kirstie. if you wanted to jump in here is that where oh, I it, it, was, it was mine <laughs> yeah yeah i knew it <laughs> i i feel like templates for the community handbook are templates related to the chewing way and this is different this is a template related to anyone yeah, anything yeah you know, this is a right yeah. so I think I would probably. Oh, we've lost Kirsty, I think. I think we did just lose. I don't know. I kind of, I put my hand up and I did take it back down because I can see the logic of putting it in the, in the community handbook. The Bruce. problem. Yes, you're speaking very slowly. <laughs> Kirsty, I think we've lost. Oh, we've lost her. And we've so lost I will her. have a discussion with Kirsty where the template will go. But there is a mega template that I was, it was very joyful to make because I was bringing all of these wonderful questions together. So I hope it will be really useful for people to use. It's going to be useful for myself generally anyway. So if it's useful for anyone else, it's a bonus. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Emma. I did just also see a hand go up from Movika. I was just going to say, uh, Aria and I will be creating some sections linking out to um, all the training material that are developed in connection with the Turing way. So we can create one section that links out to all templates, which shouldn't, which doesn't have to be in one particular guide, but it would be mostly like signposting in a more visual way. Um, oh, excellent idea. I, I put my hand down because I was like, I should go and create an issue about it rather than saying here. <laughs> Thanks, Marika. Fantastic. Lots of um, claps. 
reactions. Uh, amazing, really looking forward to it. Definitely really useful um, for all of us, I think in all of our different projects. Um, I think we have two more folks who have things to share out. I'm actually gonna pass the mic back to Malvika. So she, she's next on the list to share a pull request about open leadership. Uh, we see Esther uh, is going next, but she's gonna talk about TU Delta, I'm gonna do it. And folks, we have illustrations and I would be I would be probably showing them to you and explaining them to you. Uh, they're really beautiful. And uh, some folks will be working on the alt text. But before that, I'll show you, uh, sorry, too many tabs open. I'm gonna show you a chapter we had been working on for a long time. This is from November, Dash 2020, when uh, Laura Sion and I started a, started to scope a chapter, but then you know it all pandemic hit and people stopped working on things that they thought they want to work on, but have managed to finish them, and they're amazing. I'm very excited. So I'm going to show you. Uh, it will be in the Open Leadership in Data Science. This talks about generally describing what we mean by open leadership and how uh, this is not just about the assigned leadership and very much our emergent leadership image was created for this chapter, which has found its place. Then it talks about Mozilla Open Leadership Framework, describes a little bit of uh, where the Turing Way kind of embodies practices. Um, within that, and there are loads of stuff, as in like why this is relevant for researchers and data scientists, talking about different features of leadership. Uh, so kind leadership versus emergent leadership, followed by a little bit of uh, the 10 things. And I think Kirsty would be very happy to see it in the chapter finally. And then we have a bit about creating structure in leadership. So these were all written in 2020, but we just, I, I just signposted one of the talks we also gave very recently. So lots of things to combine. And then finishing it with building healthy leadership uh, skills, um, things that they, the skills that we should build and things that we should avoid. So I'm going to, these are very simple in terms of not written in an exhaustive way. And we have intentionally not linked external resources because everything starts to become critical. We have a portion about addressing conflict of interest in open science perspective, because we wear lots of multiple hats. How do we avoid that? And then there are two chapters, but no, the, the next one is creating leadership opportunity, which is kind of, this can be expanded, but I haven't had the chance. So the expansion of the creating leadership opportunity, opportunities would mean how do you build new positions? How do you define different processes, onboarding and offboarding? There are two chapters that uh, other folks had built. So this one was Sarah Gibson in 20, 2020, she had written. And then Patricia wrote this one last year, which is Personal Story of Leadership by a Data Librarian. So this one is all done. Thanks so much to Ariel and Batul for reviewing it. And uh, over a coffee call, Yo Yehudi also contributed to this chapter. So I'm going to live merge it very similar to Sandy. And I'm not oh. gonna... Oh, we didn't get the countdown. I don't wanna We're steal fine. the thunder from Sandy. I think that is reserved for Sandy. So this is gonna be online. I'm going to do a big reveal of illustration. Do a couple and I'll just leave until we have the uh, alt text. So we had a team from TUDEL working on open hardware and they have uh, created this illustration as a gardener thinking about cultivating an ecosystem of open knowledge. So they show a bunch of flowers with the root underneath and, and someone watering it, but thinking about how do we reuse, re replicate, and reproduce these kind of um, sort of ideas. So you can think about hardware component and how people would uh, think about different people's need, but in terms of what do we need in order to build these technology, 
uh, what kind of tools do we need? What kind of manuals do we provide to people? And how do we publish it so other people can use it? That's really um, well done. We think a lot in garden. I like in open science, people just think about garden a lot. This is about collaboration. It looks like a multi-layered cake and each layer there are people standing. Uh, so this kind of shows divide. I don't know, was this designed by you, Laurel? No, this is the open peer review one. So I'm thinking oh, okay. the text here is still missing. There is one with text coming. Do you know how to explain this? Because I don't know what this is. Right, let me also turn on. Um, so the idea was to highlight the benefits of open peer review instead of um, what we currently see happening where a lot of these processes are in a black box and no one is able to see it. So that's why there's a lot of eyes in this cake or tower. Um, and it also makes it possible to, once it's open, for people to provide input. And so the layers are sort of more the reviewers who can do uh, the reviewing, but then can also share that review with other people outside of that. So then in the end, everyone has more access to everything and the process becomes more visible. And then eventually people are also able to receive credit for the work that they've been doing, mm -hmm. which is probably the person in the back. That's the recognition. Yeah. yeah. Uh going to select one more image and uh, this one is about environmental impact um so this illustration shows a person happily uh, working on their computer and uh, using chatbot and using air conditioner and using lots of technology um, and there's constant ping around them but what they are not looking at is the amount of production of technical instruments and how frivolously we dispose them. Don't even think about where they're ending. So landfill full of all the discarded phones and cameras and all the technology that we didn't want because we wanted to upgrade. And there is uh, lots of emission um, kind of showing that there are env environmental impact of computing and uh, we as people building software should also consider the computational pressure. There are lots of really nice uh, ideas that have gone in and I will um, share that in the Slack so people can in embed those in their chapters, provide alt text, be very creative, write stories of what they are trying to tell. These are hard to say if we don't know what these are. Uh, you all enjoy that. Fantastic. Thank you so much for the hearts and claps celebrations. Um, yeah, really looking forward to, I think, the, the illustrations from this book dash. Um, really sounds like there's been such creativity and so many different topics that people have, like really difficult topics that people have um, collaborated with Scarberry to illustrate. Super cool. I'm sad that I wasn't able to participate in the session. The FOMO just accelerates. All right. So to close us off, I think I'm gonna pass the mic to the final person who will be sharing what she's been up to this book dash, the lovely and wonderful Esther. Thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna say, I'm not gonna say that I didn't do a lot in terms of doing things during the book dash because I did, but I don't have a lot of pull requests or content to show for it. Um, because the only pull request that I merged was some an, a little bit of an older one on duplications in uh, the research data management sections and the private uh, or the sensitive data sections, uh, because we earlier moved some content around and some of the information was put back in. Uh, so I abused this book dash to highlight this pull request that I already set up earlier. Uh, and then I think Emma, Emma, was it you? Someone kindly reviewed this. Uh, so I was able to merge. No, it was Johanna. I should, sorry, Johanna. Uh, Johanna was also attending the book dash. Uh, and so she made it possible for me to merge that. And then uh, what I am going to show is uh, some of the work by the TU Delft book dash participants. 
Uh, and one concrete example to share is actually um, an addition to the siding software section because Luisa shared with us that you can actually uh, download a package or work with a package in order to integrate GitLab and Zenodo. So previously, there was only av information available here on how to make your code citable using GitHub. And then she very coolly entered in a tab section with the same information for GitLab. And this was mind blowing for two reasons. Um, one, I was not even aware that this was possible using GitLab. And two, look at this, this is so pretty. So this is absolutely not my work, uh, other than that I helped uh, opening up a pull request, explaining how the Turing way works, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then Jim also helped out with uh, sharing the code for this, uh, for making it happen. So we connected online as well uh, to make this happen. So I think that's that was one of my favorite moments. Um, but then we also had, I will stop sharing for now, um, but we also had lots of people at coming into the Delft Hub. Uh, and one of them was Tanya, who co-organized the Delft Hub. Uh, and she worked on uh, how to include artists and civil society and or community-based organizations uh, in science communication, open communication. And we, there we were also able to link with the general or the wider book dash where people provided loads of input. And Tanya was completely overwhelmed slash happy with all of the input. Uh, I'm really surprised pleasantly with uh, the amount of engagement that was going on. Uh, we also had Azin attending for uh, a while, and she really just um, joined to get familiar with the Turing Way and then got easily connected with Barbara, a research software engineer from uh, the eScience Center on linting and coding and all these types of things and connections that wouldn't have been possible without the book dash. Barbara actually worked together with Pablo, also from the eScience Center, on an old pull request on error message management, uh, which she started you know, during the book dash that we uh, attended together in 2020. So this is a very old pull request. And I think that one ended up being very big. So uh, there's not a merge going on yet, but hopefully very soon. Then there was Carlos working together with Anne and Alejandro on the environmental impact of research. Um, they presented their work in the first share outs. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too much into that. And Lena was at the two Delft Hub as well. And together we worked on an older issue for research data repositories. And we joined Maya and Gigi for the data feminism work, and they presented that in the first share outs. So also don't want to jump into that too much. And um, yeah, we had the full open hardware team or almost a full, I'm not sure how many open hardware team people are involved, um, but we had Angela, Santos, Julien, Sasha, Moritz, uh, Julieta, Julieta, sorry. Uh, and Nico uh, that worked together either during the TU Delft Hub or online, or I don't know how they manage, but they're, they're pushing out so much information about open hardware and also the illustration that you saw and another illustration, I think. So I'm very excited to learn more about that one. Um, and then uh, Julien also worked on a data versioning PR, and I think he also closed one other very old issue. So lots of things going on, and I feel very privileged to be able to share all of that. Um, yeah, it was it was really nice, and I kind of don't have an ask. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to share everyone else's work, and that was it. Thanks all. Esther, absolutely incredible and very Esther-like to go, well, I don't have a lot to share, but here are a million things that have happened at the Delft Hub. Incredible, honestly. Um, I'm so, and all of us are, there are lots of emoji reactions and hearts, just um, totally in awe of the, the kind of thought and, and work and collaborations that you all have been up to this week. 
Um, maybe just a flag, if you don't mind taking a minute or two extra, um, just because not everyone who is in this share out was in the morning share out. Would you mind um, telling us a little bit more about the environmental sustainability chapter and data feminism chapters? And if there are any links to all of the things that you've shared, feel free to add that to either the chat here or the pad as well. Yeah, can we can uh, we're working on a blog um, to collect all of that in one overview. So uh, that will be uh, available next week, I hope. Um, so just elaborate on the data feminism and the environmental wellness. Sorry, I missed a bit of your sentence. Sorry. If you wanted to share, or well, I'm also happy to share the environmental sustainability chapter as well. Folks haven't heard of that work too. Yeah, I can do a little bit of the data feminism and then you can do the environmental thing if you want to. Because I, I feel a bit out of touch there. I'm like um, Lena and myself had a conversation with Maya and uh, Iggy during the book dash. So that feels a little bit more natural from my side. Um, and during summer, during the book dash, uh, they indicated that they wanted to do um, like summaries of the data feminism book. Um, and I pointed out that Lena is also very interested in that, and I've also read the book and apparently opened up an issue a year ago on something on data equity, and that lines in very well. Um, completely forgot about, well, not completely forgot about it, uh, but it seemed like a natural connection point for the, the two things to align. Um, so I'm going to try and see if I can find the path that Maya has set up. So Maya and uh, have done the like the bulk of this work I was supposed to look at things this morning and then that obviously didn't work out is this it yes please I'm very terrible at looking up things while talking but I Hi. found it so um this is the path that Maya has set up and she also showed in the other call uh where uh, both Maya and uh, Iggy are like our first, uh, the first time book dash attendees. So I think this is super major. Um, they basically collected all the resources that we've, well, that they encountered and that we've been linking throughout Slack and that was in, uh, was in the older uh, issue. And what they've been doing is um, well, summarizing each of the chapters uh, and as Maya highlighted this morning, maybe the summary is a little bit too extensive, but uh, this is obviously a draft, so they want to continue working on these things. Um, probably they're in collaboration cafes, and I should definitely be uh, looking at how I can actually put in my um, um, yeah my earlier work or resources on this so that we can integrate everything. And I think uh, Gigi uh, highlighted that not sure if it was her, but she shared that she really learned a lot um, throughout the book dash on this topic. And I thought that was very nice. For me, it was like a good push to actually go back into this topic and look at my older uh, pull requests. So that was uh, very nice. Yeah, maybe an ask is, I guess, if you have any resources on that or if you want to get involved, get in touch with Maya. Um, I think is probably the better connection point. Okay. Amazing. Um, thanks so much for walking us through. It's amazing to see a pull request also or an issue made in 2020. Um, I feel like we're bringing back so many things in this book dash that were made years ago, which is so, so great. And a reminder that one, things move slowly and we have to like trust the process and two, there was a two, but I forgot the two. Maybe that to be patient, that we're all patient, but also three to celebrate it. I don't know, now I'm making up numbers now, but I will explain very quickly the um, kind of other half um, of the massive work that is going on in the Netherlands. Um, and to give a little bit of backstory here, I will both share my screen and verbally explain. So at the Collaborations Workshop, which is a annual conference um, that the Software Sustainability Institute um, puts on every year, um, 
which is also the place where the role of the research software engineer was incubated um, in the UK. Uh, there were a couple of folks within that conference who um, kind of congregated ar around their shared interests in like learning more about and sharing more about the environmental impacts of research, um, specifically computational research. And on the third day of the conference, which is kind of like a mass, what they call a hack day, which is a space where a lot of different people can um, kind of gather together in groups to work on a specific project, um, an idea that is suggested to them. Uh, they, Carlos, along with a couple of other folks, um, were like, hey, let's write in the Turing way. Um, let's write a chapter about this topic because there are a couple of us here with that shared interest. And so what emerged from that um, was on one hand, a kind of environmentally friendly uh, event schedule, scheduler. And the second half of that um, was a new chapter about the environmental impacts, um, which is also tied to a discussion that began right around uh, last book dash in November, um, and started a series of discussions and links and um, resources that were shared out. A couple of people that were interested in getting involved, um, but it was really, really cool to see folks without really any direct guidance from anyone in the, the team to go, hey, we see where this could fit in and to start writing a chapter. Um, so I'm gonna put this link into the chat here. And I think the ask that they would also most likely have to um, would be to please, review the pull request and send over any suggestions or resources um, or um, thoughts you might have on their ongoing work. Pretty incredible. All right. Stop sharing here. Amazing. So um, we're at the top of the hour. Um, thank you all so much for sharing all the incredible things you've been up to this book dash. Am I missing anyone um, that would like to share, um, but maybe didn't have the chance to put anything into the past? Okay, great. All right. So I think from that, we have a couple of more or less housekeeping things to really ask you all. Um, for some feedback uh, to really take some time together to maybe share um, some of your experiences during this book bash. Yes, there is also a screenshot photo that we need to take. See it in the chat. Um, yeah, let's do that first. Uh, does everyone wanna turn your videos on if you are able? And we can do a little wave you can for the camera. Stop recording now as well, I think. Cool. And 